Or, or is Nana going to be able to keep the pressure up? Nana once again pushing up with his medical marines. And I think Nana has got a lot more barracks up earlier than Yarnak, than Kanata did. He's also got a, a turret up in his main. And now the Mutal is coming out for Yarnak. Uh, and this is going to be the crucial point. This is where Savior, I think, won the last game. Yarnak needs to, first of all, keep Nana off balance, slow him down, uh, and buy himself the time he needs to expand his economy. Nana has got a large group of medical marines. Uh, and so far, Nana doesn't seem to be boxed into his base as much as Kanata was. And that really is seems to be the difference in the game so far. This seems to be a much more even contest. Uh, Yarnak doesn't seem to have this type of control over the game that Savior had last game. Uh, and I don't know if that's a difference between Nara or Kanata or whether it's a difference between Savior uh, and Yarnak. And again, you can see here that Yarnak's already built, been forced to build five sunkens because Nara has got that large group of American Marines out. Uh, and maybe it's because he's delayed teching up. He's delayed getting that factory down and getting that starport up. Uh, and, and instead chosen to go for more mar marines and medics earlier, going for more barracks. And, and that seems to be the difference in strategy here. Uh, and Yarnak just trying to buy himself some time. He's got a few zerglings as well. I don't think he's in too much danger of having his sunken line broken. He's got five sunkens there and he's got a, a decent number of zerglings to back them up. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be incredibly difficult. And Yarnak intercepting a group of Dara's medic and marines. He's going to be able to take out. He needs to take that medic out. He's, he's, the medic survives, but he's taken off about eight or nine marines there. So brilliant play. And now only Nana putting the factory down. So that's the diversion in the strategy. Crucially, because Nana and I think this is the big difference. Nana has got so many American Marines, he's gonna pressure on. And oh my god, completely unnoticed! Yarnak's got an expansion up at the 1 o'clock base. I completely missed that. I just didn't see that. I'm missing a lot today, guys. Uh, I'm gonna blame it on my cold because I've got a stuffed nose and, and a bit of a sore throat if you can recognize that in my voice. But uh, Nana, he needs to find that base. I'm not sure if Nana's found that base at 1 o'clock. He's certainly moving his Marines around in that direction and he might very well have found that base. And now Yarnak able to ex harass Nana behind those turrets. Uh, and, and Yarnak just completely unnoticed has put up that expansion at the 1 o'clock base, got it up and running, but is he going to be able to defend it? That, that expansion is quite far from his base, it's near to Nana's, he's got that hive up, he doesn't have a Ninus or anything, uh, and I think he was really relying on that expansion just being completely under he hasn't even got a single sunk, and this is going to be disaster for Yarnak, he just doesn't have enough in the way of troops, he has a handful of mutilists only, he's bringing his mutilists back around now to try and defend this base, he, this is going to be disaster if he loses his base here, he has to defend this at all costs, his ultra scanner, the base goes down, Nana has made short work of that expansion, this is got to give Nana a massive advantage in this game. We saw last game and, and really that's been the difference here. I don't know whether Nana has learned from Kanata's mistakes or whether this was his original strategy to go for. Kanata going for, uh, for Yana going for a virtually similar strategy to what Savior went for, just not seeming to be as authoritative in it. <coughs> Oh god, I pulled my mic out. I, I hope that mic hasn't been out for a long time. Uh, Nana, however, has put down a couple of extra barracks there, and, and that seems to have made a big difference in this game, because he has had the medic and marine force to defend as well as push out. He didn't build as many turrets. So you can see that Nana's aggressive peace style is what has paid off for him, given him this strong position in the game that he's in now, whereas Kanata just chose to turtle and let the Zerg do what he wanted and paid the price for it. Uh, and, and I said this in the last game, I said if you can stop the Zerg from getting that third gas, that gives you a big advantage as a Terran player. And that's what Nana has done, that's what Kanata failed to do. Uh, uh, and I really see this to be a little bit of a trouble for uh, Kanata, for Yarnak now, because he's got the tech, he's got the Ultralist Cavern going up, but he doesn't have the third gas to be able to mass produce all those Ultralists that he need, that Savior was able to do. Uh, and he is harassing a little bit, he's got a lot of Zerglings, he is harassing with those mutalists, but Nana has got dual starports now building, so Nana really has delayed, and it's an interesting to see, I mean, I, I, I predicted that this would be a very dropship oriented game, uh, and, and it seems to be neither of the Terran players agree with me, so I clearly don't know what I'm talking about in that respect. I've been shown to be utterly wrong, Bio seems to be the way to go for Terran, and I guess uh, my, my naivety on this map uh, stems from the fact that I haven't seen a lot of games in it, but enough of me making excuses. We've got a battle here in the middle of the map. Yara trying to pick off Nara's forces in the middle of the map. He's managed to do a great job of it. He's killed a lot of American Marines with those Mutalists and Zerglings. He's taken out about half of Nara's force. Nara bringing reinforcements out, uh, but Yarnak is going to be gone by that time. So Nara losing about a group and a half of American Marines there. Yarnak has got Ultralis out now, so he's not he's not in a bad position, but that, that third gas is really costing him, and I think he was counting on that base being hidden, and I think that's what's hurt him here. Uh, combined with the fact that Nana took the early offensive in the game, uh, going for the for, for the ag more aggressive strategy. Uh, and, and I think really now it's up to Yarnak to do something to pull pull the game back. I think it's up to Yarnak to try and pull the game back. Well, all Nana needs to do is keep the pressure up. Uh, and Nana once again pushing forward now, this time for that expansion. And that expansion is coming under fire from that American Marine group. Nana's got a couple of groups of American Marines there. The Ninus is not up. 
Uh, and this is gonna go down. Nada, Yarak is gonna lose his hatchery. Nada is gonna kill this hatchery before those ultimates arrive. The ultimates are not speed upgraded yet, and the hatchery goes down at the 7 o'clock position. Yarak loses his second expansion, and I think that's too much of a loss for him to be able to recover from. The ultimates and Zerglings are gonna probably mop up most of that medic and marine force. And crucially, oh my god, those medic and marines have killed all the Zerglings, and they're still surviving with them. And oh, I got Nada with a drop! Nada not going for science vessels at all! Brilliant by Nada! He's dropping in Yarak's main! Yarak is in huge trouble! This is a natural exploit going, getting taken out now! He's lost a lot of Zerglings! A lot of drones. He's now going to lose his ultralist cavern. There goes his tech. Uh, and just Nana making mincemeat of Yarnak the way Xavier made mincemeat of Canada. And really you just can see how different players can take a different, turn the game into a completely different experience and a completely different showcase. And now the spire goes down as well. Oh my god, Nana laying down the pain. He is introducing Yarnak to some serious pain. Yarnak just looking so rusty. He just not, has not been in this game. His harass was relatively ineffective versus Nana. And I think when it boils down to it, you've just got to say that Nana has played a perfect game here uh, and, and showing something of his old mastery. Uh, and again, uh, more divergence in strategy. Uh, perhaps, you know, Nana knew that Yarnak wasn't going to go for lurkers on this map and maybe that's what he's used to that advantage. Typically, the strategy of mass bio with science vessels is, is important to counter the use of lurkers. Uh, and, and Yarnak maybe was too predictable. Maybe if he'd built a lurker or two, Nana did not have any science vessels uh, early on in the game and that would have given Yarnak the ability to defend easily and cement his position in the game. He teched too fast and maybe it's just a case of uh, a copying of the strategy or, or a strategy being too predictable. Xavier went for the exact same strategy and it wasn't countered uh, whereas Nana seems to have figured out the perfect counter to this strategy to go with more medics and marines earlier on. Obviously he delayed getting that science vessel for quite some time and, and uh, if Yarnak had had a couple of lurkers in, if he, he, you know, rather than going for the fast tech, that would have changed the game entirely. But he didn't, and Nana with the perfect counter, pulling out the game. So, um, Nana has made it made it obvious that a Zerg player cannot just easily walk through the tech and, and economic advantage on this map and just grow and spread and just overwhelm them in, in late game. And really, Yarnak not able to get out, out of the middle game really in this game. Uh, brilliant play by Nana, effective and decisive play. Uh, and I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what these two guys, Savior and Nada, are going to bring against each other in the next matchup. Both of these old champions look to be, uh, and, and I think it's unfair to call Savior an old champion, uh, but both of these veteran players, these champions of the past, look to be in fine form. Uh, and I think there's going to be an epic matchup between those two guys, and I'm looking forward to commenting on it next after I finish this one. Uh, and really, it's just a case of Nada mopping up uh, Yarnak's remaining forces. I see no way back whatsoever for Yarnak in this game. Nada doing everything right. Uh, and uh, I think again you've got to say that the crucial point in the game was Nana's decision first of all to go for those barracks early on instead of trying to tech uh, and conversely for Yarnak also to try and tech very fast to have an expansion that was completely undefended uh, and his harass wasn't as effective either again I think ultimately you've got to give more credit to Nana than blame to Yarnak because in the, at the end of the day the, the game, the flow of the game was controlled by Nana's decision to have those extra medic and marines around. It limited the harass, it allowed him more mobility, allowed him map control, it prevented Yarnak from getting that defense up. Because really, in Savior versus Kanada, when Kanada finally ventured out to attack Savior, Savior already had his Nidus canal up. And, and that just goes to show the massive difference uh, in the level of play between Kanata and Nada. Uh, and K Kanada now with the last, uh, Yarnak now with the last ditch attack against Nada's main with all of his. Ultralist, and it looks like he's managed to get a plague off. On um, actually, no, he didn't. Sorry, he did not get a plague off there. So just um, Nada closes out the game. GG. Very easy game for Nada in the end, um, and I'm really looking forward to Nada versus Saber. That's going to come up right after this, guys. This is Cloudzart. Thanks for listening.